Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Google Search News series. I hope life is treating you reasonably well wherever you are. I'm your host today, John Mueller, here from home in Switzerland. With this show, we want to give you a regular summary of what's been happening around Google Search, specifically for webmasters, publishers, and SEOs. If you find these useful, which I hope you do, and if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now that you're here, I've missed you. It's been a while since our last Google Search news. The coronavirus has stirred things up a bit. Everything's a bit more complicated and confusing. Like many of you, we're currently all working from home. On the one hand, this means my commute to my desk is now extremely short. On the other hand, this means our usual recording studio setup is out of reach. So to help keep you informed about Google Search, we decided to start recording from home. We're not sure when things will get better with regards to recording. So in the meantime, we'll do more videos like this from home. And now on to the Google Search news. Today, we'll take a look at COVID-19 related updates, new speed metrics, mobile first indexing, and more. So let's check it out. Many things have changed as coronavirus started making its rounds. For Google, this meant adding and modifying some parts of search, as well as helping webmasters tackle the new challenges in various ways. The details are linked below, and here's a brief overview. With in-person events being canceled, we added support for postponed, canceled, and online events with structured data. Government and official health websites can now show special announcements directly in search results using structured data and a separate Search Console tool. As businesses temporarily closed, we noticed that some sites were handling the closure badly, so we created guidance for handling closures in a search-friendly way. For other sites, the issues were more with regards to additional server load, so we created some help for dealing with that. And finally, to help official organizations to make their information as accessible as quickly as possible, we set up a separate help forum. We know there will continue to be challenges that arise as the world turns, so I'm sure there will be more to come in this regard. As a side note, the changes in events also affect our events as well. For the meantime, we've put our Webmaster Conference series on hold and have started sharing some highlights from individual sessions on YouTube in the Webmaster Conference Lightning Talks playlist. Time spent being at home feels like it's passing both extremely quickly and extremely slowly. What is time? What day is it? Well, I don't know either. However, when it comes to the speed of web pages, Chrome recently launched a new set of metrics that we call the Core Web Vitals. It provides a clear set of foundational metrics for website developers to help build and improve online experiences. These will be introduced across a variety of tools like Lighthouse, Chrome DevTools, and PageSpeed Insights. Google Search Console currently offers an experimental speed report, which highlights the previous metrics used across these tools. With the announcement of Core Web Vitals, the team is planning to update the speed report to help site owners identify opportunities to improve user experiences on their sites. The Core Web Vitals includes the following metrics. Largest Contentful Paint, or LCP in short, this measures perceived load speed and marks the point in the page load timeline when a page's main content has likely loaded. This metric is dependent on first contentful paint and time to first byte, which you might have heard of before. First input delay, or FID. This measures responsiveness and quantifies the experience users feel when trying to first interact with the page. Cumulative layout shift or CLS, which measures the visual stability and quantifies the amount of unexpected layout shift of visible page content. Because the web continues to evolve, we expect to update these on an annual basis and to give you the tools you need to help make your websites fantastic. We'll keep you informed as time goes by. We mentioned mobile-first indexing in our last episode as well. Mobile-first indexing is a process of Google indexing the web using a crawler that acts like a mobile device, like a smartphone. 
This matches what users commonly see when they browse. About 70% of all search results currently shown are from mobile-first indexing, and we expect this number to rise significantly once some of the larger websites are able to be moved over. This is an amazing achievement that's only possible due to a lot of work on websites, making them work well for mobile devices. We're continuing to move forward with mobile-first indexing as our systems recognize that sites are ready. As a goal, earlier this year, we decided to switch everything over to mobile-first indexing in September of this year. We picked that date before coronavirus was widespread here, so it's possible that this date might change. Sites continue to improve with regards to mobile-first indexing, even in times of COVID-19, which is a great sign. To make it easier for sites to get ready for mobile-first indexing, we added more documentation in our developer docs. If you're unsure of your website's status with regards to mobile-first indexing, Google Search Console will show you how we're primarily indexing your pages. These are some pretty big changes, but there's a lot more. Here's a brief run-through to help keep you up to date. In the Search Developers documentation, we added a page that lists all updates to the documentation. No need to watch this show anymore. No, wait, not that. But it will help to keep you informed of all changes, for example, in structured data elements. We added documentation about licensable images, if that's something that you have on your site. JavaScript and structured data, how do they work together? Check out more in the developer documentation. Search Console now has a revamped removals report, information about review-rich snippets and updated site move features, and some cool new user interface changes, such as better exports. There is always more happening around search than we can cover here. If you'd like to stay up to date, I'd recommend subscribing to this channel, checking in on our blog, and following us on Twitter. That's all for now, folks. Thank you for joining us, and thanks for your patience as we navigate recording from home. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them right here or reach out to us on Twitter. And now, on to the weather. Let's be realistic. It's not very useful to do a weather report because nobody's going outside anyway. Let's hope that things get better soon. In the meantime, mark your calendars for June 10 to join us for the next Webmaster Conference Lightning Talk on Rich Results and Google Search Console.